It was a dark and sinister time in the Indian state of Punjab as a monster locked in the shadows. This monster is Dabara Singh. He was also known as a baby killer and for good reason. He would lock in the shadows, preying on innocent children, and he was known to have taken the lives of over 15 children, luring them away with promises of candy and giving them a good time and giving them toys, and then he would end their lives. The year was 2004, and the people of Punjab were living in fear. The news of the killings had spread like wildfire, and parents were afraid to let their children out of their sight. The police were on high alert, but they had very little to go on. Singh was cunning and left no clothes behind. The only thing the police had to work with was the fact that all of the victims had their throats slashed. It was also believed that he murdered most of the victims before ending them. One of his first victims was an eight-year-old girl named Diksha. She had been playing outside her house with her sister Asher when Singh lured them away with the promise of buying them a racket and shuttlecock. While he assaulted Diksha, her little sister Asher was able to get away. Their parents looked everywhere for them but couldn't find them. The kindness of a stranger saved little Asher that day when she was found wandering around the neighboring village. The stranger took her to the police station who were able to identify her and return her home. It wasn't until the next morning when they found the lifeless body of Diksha lying in a nearby field. Another known victim was an eight-year-old girl by the name Tazbin. She was playing outside with her sister Mumtaz when Singh approached them. He had a friendly smile on his face and she did not suspect a thing. He promised to buy them candy and soda. He also told the girls they would make more money by selling empty bottles which he promised to provide. Tazmi, not knowing any better, followed him, while Montaz refused to go with them. A few days later, she was found lying on the ground, bleeding from a slit throat. The killings continued, one after another, each one more brutal than the last. The people of Punjab were living in a state of constant fear, and the police were under immense pressure to catch the killer. They walked tirelessly, following up on every lead, but Singh remained elusive. Finally, on September 30, 2004, the police finally caught a breakthrough. They received a tip off from a local resident who had seen Singh in the area. The police rushed to the spot and found him hiding in a sugarcane field. He had a knife in his hand and his clothes were stained with blood. Singh was taken into custody and interrogated. He confessed to the killings and the police were shocked at the level of depravity he displayed. He showed no remorse whatsoever for his actions and even boasted about how easy it was to lure the children away. More details about this gruesome murderer emerged right around the time he was apprehended. Born in Jalupokhiera village, Singh joined the Indian Armed Forces. While there, he was accused of throwing a hand grenade at a senior officer's house after an altercation. This resulted in serious injuries to the wife and son of the senior officer. Singh's wife left him during this time as she couldn't bear the tumultuous marriage anymore. In 1996, after his separation from his wife, Singh abused the daughter of a migrant worker in Kaputhala in a way that no girl should be subjected to. Then he tried to murder her. He was promptly arrested and tried. For his crimes, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. He was, however, released on December 2003 on grounds of good behavior. By this time, he had developed a strong hatred for migrants in the country, blaming them for being the reason why he wasted most of his productive years in prison. After his release from prison, Singh would go ahead and target the children of migrant workers, luring them with the promise of treats, samosas, candies, you name it, anything that would put these children in a vulnerable position. He would target these children when their parents were away from home working at factories, and then he would pounce at the first opportunity he gets. 
He was said to have killed up to 23 victims, all of whom were very young children before his capture. The trial following his arrest for the gruesome slaying of children was a long and grueling process, but the evidence against Singh was overwhelming. He was ultimately found guilty in five cases and sentenced to death. But even that was not enough for the people of Punjab, who demanded justice for the innocent lives that he had taken. Singh's death sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment. The trial of Dabra Singh was such a grueling process that lasted for months. The prosecution presented overwhelming evidence against him, including eyewitness accounts, DNA samples, and his own confession. Singh's defense team tried to argue that he was mentally unstable and not responsible for his actions, but the argument fell flat. Despite his conviction, Singh remained defiant. He showed no remorse for his actions and even taunted the families of the victims. His behavior only added to the pain and suffering of those who had lost their children. He even told the police that he would have continued killing had he not been caught so soon. His only regret was targeting a Punjabi girl by mistake, but he had to take her life because keeping her alive would have caused problems for him. Years went by and the memories of the baby killer case began to fade, but for the families of the victims, the pain and the loss remained. They continued to mourn their children and to seek justice for them. In 2010, the case was reopened and Singh was brought to trial again. This time, he was facing charges in several other cases of child abduction, assault and murder. The families of the victims hoped that this time, justice would be served. The trial was just as grueling as the first one, with the prosecution presenting damning evidence against Singh. But this time, Singh's defense team put up a stronger fight, arguing that the evidence was circumstantial and that Singh was not guilty of the crimes. On December 10, 2010, a judge acquitted him on one count of sexual assault and a murder charge, but he was convicted of kidnapping and causing life-threatening injury to a surviving victim. Singh later died in prison in June 2018, with several charges against him still pending. After his death, his family refused to claim his body. They were so ashamed of the crimes that this man committed that they said that it would be a shame for them to take his body and bury him in their family plots. So it is assumed that the state buried Singh and no one knew where he was buried. But as for his family, the cloud of what this monster had done still lingers over their lives. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your support goes a long way in helping me create more content. Until next time, humans, stay safe out there.